All right. Hello, everyone. This is Charles Coleman, team leader of Keller Williams Avenue's Realty, and wanted to go over today uh, advance versus arrears. And so when you are on the real estate exam, you're going to be getting questions around prorations. And so when you get a proration question, there could be uh, one of these things, right? They're either going to pay their money in advance or they're going to pay the money in the arrears. And so every time what we should be doing is creating this timeline, right? And so this is the start. This is the end. And then here at some point, and this could move either way, this is the sell or close date, okay? So when we're looking at these different pieces, now we, we have um, some areas to work with, and this is a, a great visual representation. So one of the things that we can do is, let's say that we're talking about a, like a water bill, right? And so same thing, I'm gonna have my water bill, and maybe this is um, February 1, this is February 28th, and then maybe we have Here's our close date and let's just call it February 15th. Okay, so here's our, our visualization. This is truly gonna be a water proration. So one of the things is, let's say that the water is paid in advance. So the water was all paid in advance. So it was paid somewhere on this side of the timeline for the entire month. Of February. Well, this is the thing. This shaded area, the new owner owns the home and is using the water. So what's going to happen is what we're going to see on the test is we need to debit new owner, which is the buyer, and credit the seller right? Because it's not fair that the seller has to pay for all this water being used by the new owner who is the buyer. So what we also have is this, right? Let's say that we're talking about real estate taxes and I'm still going to draw the timeline, right? And we're talking January 1st through December 31st. And somewhere in here, we have a closing date. Um, and let's just call our closing date, uh oh, July 31. All right, so we got January 1st, July 31st, and December 1st, and this is, again, day of close. So the seller lived in the property during this time. And let's say the real estate taxes were paid in the arrears. So that means that if we are talking about 2022, the taxes won't be paid until 2023. So what we're looking at here is this, the seller needs to pay for all the time that they used right? This is all the seller's time. They benefited from the property from January 1st to July 31st. Well, this is the thing. The taxes are not going to be paid until 2023, the next year, the following year. So what's going to happen is we need to collect money from the seller so that the new owner, which is the buyer, can pay the taxes in 2023. So what this is gonna look like is this is gonna be debit seller and credit buyer. The third thing that you might see on the exam is gonna look something like this. I think it could be around a water proration again. And let's call it again, February 1. February 28th, and let's call the close date February 15th, okay. 
So one of the things that you might see is that the taxes were paid in advance, or I'm sorry, the water bill was paid in advance. And then they're gonna say something along the lines of the tax or the water bill was never paid. So they're due in advance and never paid. Well, at this point, right, we have the seller in here and the buyer is here. What we need to do then is we need to debit both the seller and debit the buyer for both of their shares at this point. So these are the three things that you're gonna see, right? When they're, when they're paid in advance, we need to debit the buyer and credit the seller if it's been paid because you owe for the portion that you used. If it is paid in the rears, then we need to debit the seller and credit the buyer so that the buyer can pay when it's finally due. And then if it's paid in advance, yet no party has made the payment yet, we're going to debit both parties for their actual time used in their prospective spaces. So always start with your timeline. This can be for a month. This could be a quarter. This could be a year. You can always use this. And this is a great visualization of the timeline of actual time used. Anyways, I hope that was helpful um, and can't wait to see you guys next time on the next breakout that we do to help you pass your real estate exam.